Hey YouTube, this is Justin here, aka Demonic Sweaters. Sorry if this input or voice recording is a bit noisy. I have a lot of things hooked up on my computer right now and it's amazing this is even working. So <laughs> I just wanted to uh, walk you through something that I think is really awesome that I just figured out how to do. If you're a user of MuseScore on Windows, uh, if you're not familiar, well, you're probably familiar if you're watching this, but MuseScore is a music notation uh, composition program. And uh, I use it to create drum scores and occasionally other scores as well, but it's free and it's really awesome. But one of the things that always kind of drove me crazy is there was no way to sync it up with another program, like as far as sending out like a MIDI time code or something like that. However, there is a way and uh, it's a little bit weird. It's kind of convoluted, but it does work and it's a little limited. You know, you only have a few uh, like choices of what you can use, but I'm going to show you what those are as far as the ones I know, and uh, talk about how to get it all set up. First off, let me just show you what's happening here. So you'll see I have a digital audio workstation set up right here. This is a program called uh, uh, Harrison Mixbus, which is essentially our door. Our door is a free DAW. Uh, I think it's free or it's open source or it used to be free. Maybe it's still free, but I'm going to show you that. And uh, the Harrison Mixbus is basically the commercial version of that, and I've had this for a very long time. And then right here I have uh, MuseScore 3.6. So let me show you, and I'm going to press play here on MuseScore. And you can see at the same time, my DAW started. And they're both in sync. So. The way that this is working is through a, another tool, which is called Jack, and that is right here. And this little program, actually, if you're familiar with Linux, um, I used to use Linux a lot, and I actually really loved this program in Linux because it allows you to connect different apps with each other uh, as far as audio and MIDI goes. And uh, they have a Windows version now. They have had one for a while. Um, and it works great, but the problem is there's just not a lot of programs that have Jack compatibility. However, these two do, as well as our door. So first off, what you need to do, let's go in here to my web browser, is actually first install Jack, download and install Jack. And you can see it right here. We have the Windows 32-bit uh, and 64-bit. Most people are going to need the 64-bit installer if you're using a computer that was made in like the last 10 years. Um, now, I haven't tried this on Mac. Uh, maybe it works just as well on Mac. I'm not sure, but there is a Mac version here, and uh, that's worth a shot. If somebody wants to give it a shot and uh, you know post a comment here or make their own video, that'd be cool too. But uh, first, you download and install uh, Jack, and it's pretty easy to use. Um, it comes with this little program called QJack Control, and that's what this is, what you're looking at right here. Well, QJack CTL. And when you go in here to Setup, it should see everything that you have connected to your computer basically by itself. Like it already saw my interface and sample rate and everything I just left alone. Um, I really didn't have to do anything here. In Linux, sometimes it took some like tweaking and figuring out what to do. But in Windows, it seemed to just work. So I didn't have to turn on any options. Display I left alone. I mean, all this stuff I just left alone. And I just went in here and pressed start. Now, it's a little confusing because this actually isn't a play button. This starts the Jack program is what that does. But right here, this actually is a play button. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit because, well, I'll just talk about it now. <laughs> this actually controls, it's basically your master control here. So I can also start both programs using that button right there, which is pretty cool. Um, these things right here, these little red uh, errors, you don't have to worry about those, uh, those unless you're getting like a ton of them. But that's uh, basically when you have like processing errors in your computer, but I've only had one, so it's not a big deal. Um, <clears throat> or basically it's not able to keep up with the processing or something like that, I don't know. They call them X runs, but it's something. So what you need to do is after you download and install Jack, don't start it yet, you're still gonna download some things. The next thing you need to do is get MuseScore 3.6.2.54802. This was the last version of MuseScore 3. MuseScore 4 does not do this, and that really bothers me. I wish MuseScore 4 did it, but there, MuseScore 4, to me, really still is very buggy. I, 
I have a lot of problems with it, so I tend to like MuseScore 3 better anyways. Uh, but you can get that here. It's on this website. I'll post links to all of this down below. This is from the official site. If I go back here, you'll see um, I just went here to uh, older unsupported versions and clicked on Windows 7 or higher. And then you go all the way down here to the bo bottom and you'll see MuseScore uh, 3.6.2.548021803. <laughs> but that's the one you want. So download and install that. And then you're also going to need a compatible DAW. Our door is right here. This is uh, community.ardor.org. I'll post a link th to this down below as well. And you can download the latest version of our door and, uh, or Mixbus if you have Mixbus or if you want to buy Mixbus. I have a very old version of Mixbus. They're up to like, I don't know what, version 9 now or something. I don't know. I have 5. But I've had it for a really long time and it still works just fine. Yeah, it's version 9. Okay, so I think most of the settings should be pretty similar. So once you have that, all of those things installed, you're going to open up MuseScore first, and you're going to go into the settings of MuseScore. So let's go in here to Edit and go to Preferences. And then you're going to go to I.O. and make sure you tick the Jack Audio Server option, and then just check all of these boxes. So that's basically going to tell MuseScore to use the Jack Audio Connection Kit as its audio and MIDI uh, connections. So once you do that, uh, you're going to have to close MuseScore and then open up uh, QJack Control and then start QJack Control by using this start button right here. And then you can open up MuseScore again and it will work. So you have to start Jack before you open up the other programs is what I'm trying to say. And uh, Mixbus, it's the same thing. You basically go into, or our door, uh, you're going to go into, where is it? Um, audio MIDI setup. And then just make sure your audio system is set to jack right here. And it actually prompts you when you first open up our door if you want to use jack as your server and say yes. So once you do that, you also have to click this little button right here. And that basically enables your uh, sync from the jack server so if i click that then it's no longer jack it's basically the internal but if i go here then it's going to get that play uh, midi time code from the jack server so once you have all of that set up um, you can close you know make sure you close everything and then make sure that you start qjack control first before you open up these other programs once you do that, they should totally be in sync. And then you can either press play in MuseScore to start it. Or you can press play on QJack Control, like I showed you before. Or I think you can even do it on our door. Let's see if that works. Yeah, so any of them will work. So that's really handy. So yeah, that's it. It's really, well, it's not simple, but, but it's not that hard. And it does work really well once you get it set up. And I find it really, really useful because I was able to compose this whole drum score while playing back my track in real time because here I just have a mix without my drums. I didn't record this song in Mixbus. I recorded it in uh, Reaper, but then I just exported you know, a WAV file and then just imported it into Mixbus. Reaper doesn't really, I haven't been able to get Reaper to work uh, to do this. Um, you, can, you can do other things with Reaper, uh, with MuseScore, like you can send a MIDI output of MuseScore and control VSTs in Reaper. Excuse me. But I have not found a way to send a sync output uh, via Jack into Reaper and sync it up. It only seems to work with Harrison Mixbus or Ardor. And I think there's some like some other video players out there that may do this as well. But if you know of Jack compatible programs uh, for Windows, please post down below because I'd love to know all of the available programs. I know there's not that many, but I really think, you know, people should implement it because it is a great thing to be able to use. And it was one of my favorite things about Linux actually uh, was the Jack audio server. So anyway, thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully you found this helpful. Hopefully this video recorded <laughs> and uh, because that was another thing. I guess I could talk about this too, because I have OBS going here also through Jack. And that was even more complicated. And I'll show you just how complicated that is here. 
um, I had to install the ASIO plugin for uh, OBS and then start the ASIO input capture in OBS as well as make all these little connections here. Like if I go into OBS and mix bus and all these things, you know, I had to basically route all these different uh, audio connections into my OBS input right here. So it would record uh, while I'm talking and while I'm playing back MuseScore and uh, Harrison Mixbus. So um, that's a little bit outside the scope of this tutorial, but maybe if you're trying to do that, that'll point you in the right direction. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click the bell icon, and uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day.